Welcome to the Themes Panel. My name is Jen Ecker. I run a web design and development agency in Portland, Maine. Um, we have our own work camp that usually happens in May, so next year I encourage everyone to come up to Portland um, to check out our work camp. Um, so I think what we'll start doing, we'll start is I'll have everyone sort of introduce themselves and talk a little bit about how they use themes um, so we can get a feel for um, expertise and, and how they're doing it. And then I will ask that um, you come up to the mic if you have a question since this is being recorded for uh, WordCamp TV and ask questions and we'll learn some stuff about themes. So do you want to start, Maura? Oh, me. Okay. All right. Hi, I'm Maura Ashley. And um, I've been coming on the mic, right? <laughs> Good job, I Hi, I'm Maura Ashley, and I've been working the internet since 1995. That's a couple years. I went out and started freelancing in 1997, and this is way before WordPress ever came around. I learned to write HTML before there were tools. Thank you very much. <laughs> and <laughs> worked through the tables, and then learning CSS, and one of the things I've learned about being in this business is you have to always be ready to learn. Be ready to learn and change, because that's the only way you can survive. So I've been in the process for a long time. I um, have my own business, and I'm part also a contractor. I've contracted for places like Dun & Bradstreet, Broadridge Financial Solutions, Liberty Mutual. Um, right now I'm contracting for database designs, and we're working on the Mass Historical Society's tools. So I also do UI work as well as building websites for small clients and I have quite a few, well, I have several. I'm running at least 10 WordPress sites <laughs> right now. Um, small clients. And I'm talking small one person businesses. So those are the type of people I work with. I went kicking and screaming into WordPress. One of my clients wanted a blog. I didn't want to go there. I wasn't thrilled with PHP. I had a prejudice that I learned from early on in the business that PHP wasn't secure. I've gotten past that, thank you very much, <laughs> and that's another thing you have to be careful of in the business. So um, I use themes, I don't build my own. There are so many out there. Um, I have favorites, I go back to favorites, and I also um, sometimes fall back to the, if I'm testing, to the WordPress themes built by the WordPress, uh, the WordPress group itself, because they build really solid themes. Wow. Um, I'm just a writer who writes two blogs. Um, when I started, this is back in 2005, I'm a person who's autistic. And um, my diagnosis came in 2002, so a couple years later in 2005, I always wanted to be a writer. I love to write. So I started my first blog, Outside In, and that was on AOL journals, because um, I did not know about WordPress at the time. Um, on outside in, I wrote about, you know, news about Asperger syndrome, because that's what I originally was um, diagnosed with, along with nonverbal non learning disorder. I also have sleep apnea. Um, might as well throw that out, because when I started the blog, I'd just been diagnosed with sleep apnea. Um, and I also write about pop culture a lot, because sometimes I can't find positive news about Asperger's or sleep apnea or nonverbal at the time, so I write about pop culture. Then two years later, um, there's this newspaper that came out in 2007 called Boston Now, and I decided to join them. And I named the second blog after my pen name, on Uncommon Bostonia, because that's the name I use on the Outside In blog, instead of my real name. And it's so I named the second blog on Cobb Bostonia, and I wrote posts for this newspaper, and this newspaper sometimes published my posts in their paper a lot, some they didn't. And um, sadly, in 2008, the newspaper folded all of a sudden. Um, they lost their funding from their owners in Iceland. True story. And um, that was heartbreaking. So I, I recreated the on Cobb Bostonian blog onto um, AOL Journals, but a couple months later, AOL Journals announced that, oh, we're going away, and they suggested, oh, move the blogs to Blogger. I didn't really like that, and one of my readers um, suggested, oh, after you move it to Blogger, move it to WordPress, so that's what I did. I moved both of them to Blogger and then WordPress, and that's where they've been ever since. 
Um, about themes, um, I found the themes interesting in the, in the WordPress thing, and uh, I, I said, when I set them up in 2008, I, I you know, I picked, um, you know, the themes they had available at the time, and I had to sometimes change them, because um, one of them, they said, oh, we're getting rid of this theme, so you could try this one, and, but I decided to try another one, called Oshimish oh, oh, for the Young Kong Bostonian blog. And I had that, um, I used that for the last few years until recently I changed it to another theme. That, I think they called it Yoko Ono or something like that, a strange name, but I just changed it last week. And um, right now, the um, Outside In blog, it's still uh, the, the Misty Look theme is what I've been using, but I'm also an artist and I have an extra page on the Outside In blog. And I'm, I'm posting the artwork on this extra page, the artwork page, but um, I'm having problems with that. But at this work camp this weekend, they said, oh, you need to use a special plugin for that. So I'm looking into what plugin to do that. Very helpful. But um, during the time, over the years, I've been working on a book. Well, I joined a, a, a meetup group, a writer's group along the way, and we published a book called um, Seven at the Seventh. And our group is called Writers Anonymous, and I use my pen name on Common Bostonian as one of the authors of that book, and that came out in 2011. And I was working on another book, but unfortunately it, it took a little bit longer because around the time the, the, the um, Seven at the Sevens book came out, I was in a terrible car accident. Then, um, you know, and along the way, you know, my parents, they got very ill, even a couple of my aunts passed away, and a couple of cats too. <laughs> really bad. <laughs> it's been pretty rough. Um, but in the past year or so, I've been working really hard on this book, and this spring, I came out with this book called The Outside In View of Uncommon Bostonian, What an Autistic Black Woman Sees. It's the blog post from the, the newspaper, Uncommon Bostonian, the Boston Now newspaper post, and I put them in there with some of my essays and some of my artwork. And that's what I've been doing. So now I'm focusing more on my blogs, but also promoting this at the same time on both my blogs. And thinking about another book. And, um, and um, recently, uh, uh, another book I co-authored called All the Weight of Our Dreams on uh, Living Racialized Autism just came out last month. And I have an essay and some of my artwork in that book, too. So now I'm focusing a little bit more on my, my blogs and changing up the themes. So that's that's what I am. I'm a writer. I'm not really a developer or a coder or anything that. I just love to write. That's all I want to do. And that's what I have to express here. Oh, but it didn't take too long. <laughs> <laughs> Ro, you want to go? Yeah. So my name is Ro Prague, now Capiello. Um, I work for a local university um, doing project management. I also do a lot of our clients within the university's uh, microsites. So I use WordPress and I have since I graduated college. Um, I love the fact that it's very easy to use if you're not technical, if you don't have a lot of coding skills. Um, it's very friendly. I find the, um, uh, the formatting very easy for everyone to use. It's easy to change and the themes are wonderful. So um, that is why I enjoy using WordPress and its themes. Now, I don't have uh, too much coding experience. I know HTML, a little bit of CSS, um, and that's been enough to help me make the customizations that our clients have wanted. Um, but mostly I focus on accessibility, because uh, we do a lot of work for the state, and we have to be 508 compliant for that. So um, I find that WordPress is extremely generous in that respect. Awesome. So it sounds like we have a good array of user. We have some building sites and um, someone who's like making themes and I'm especially interested in accessibility, so no one asked you a question about it, I'm going to ask you a question about it. Um, does anyone have a question to start? Okay, can you come up to the mic so we can all hear you? Hi, so like Maria, I have been involved in, word, in web design since 98, so you win. Um, and I've seen the, well, yeah, and I've seen the whole gamut as you have. So I'm very heavily vested in design work over the years and do this on the side. I work at UMass Boston as a senior web designer there and we don't use um, WordPress. So 
My problem is um, I'm really good at customizing CSS and HTML and all that fun stuff. I'm not a PHP programmer. Um, and so I like to really provide client value and provide something very specific for each client. And so I can't choose the same theme and easily revise a theme for all my given clients. So what I find happening is I spend vested amount immense amount of time diving into each individual themes, nuances for the customization that some of it can't be billable because it's just not a good business model and I'm trying to figure out the best approach to, to do that doing the customization that you know so many of us in here do that are, and I've tried by the way building my own themes so unless you really are a good PHP programmer that isn't for the faint of heart either. So my question is, what do you, you know, as a business model, what, what can we do to, in, to lighten the burden of ramp up for each theme so that we can then provide the customization we need for our clients? Okay, so um, for me, what I've found is I have a developer who makes really solid themes. They're fairly simple. You can put a builder on top of them, and they don't break the plugins. So I tend to go back to that same developer a lot because he'll answer me my questions within two to three days. So for me, I need support, I need simple, and I need solid and then customizable. He sells a package, his themes are basically free, he sells a package over it that will let you um, do a lot of adaption, including color, spacing, fonts, things like that. So I tend to fall back to him. That isn't the only theme I use. But it's the first choice as I start a project, and I try to start there because I need something to fall back to if I pick a more elaborate theme that breaks some of the plugins, which they sometimes do. I know I try to keep the plugins at a minimal as well, but then again, you know, there's at least two or three you've got to throw in there for client value. So just to follow up on that real quick without uh, occupying too much time, um, is he a self-proclaimed theme developer? Yes. Or, okay. Yes. Okay, and you just partner, you kind of partner with I him? I just take his themes and, and I've connected with him and he's just really great. And you found so, that that reduces the, the ramp up time for your It does for me. For you. Uh, it isn't the only theme I use, but it is, I mean, I just built a, a theme on the new 2017, the Parallax. It was fun. It was a ball. It took me more work and it took me more time. And yes, I lost money because I, I bid it out. But it, I learned the theme, so that was, you have to sometimes decide what you're lear what you're learning and realize that some of your loss is learning and that's that's just part of the business. Oh I, I, I understand. But I, <laughs> I agree just with know looking for the themes is, is challenging. If you find a good theme, I don't have a problem if it's customizable enough sticking with it because you can change it enough through CSS and plugins that you can't tell I mean you can always tell what a WordPress site you look at a site and it's you can pretty much brand that's a WordPress site. But you can customize it enough, at least with the theme I'm using, that's simple, it doesn't interfere with the plugins, but it's customizable enough. You can't tell one site looks like the other. Thank you. And I, I'm happy to tell you that offline. I, I don't know if I'm supposed to promote anybody's. So I guess I would ask also, since we're talking about customizing, is how would the rest of you, Yvonne and Ro, how do you handle customizing your sites? Oh, um, well. In my case, uh, I mean, if there's something there I don't like, like uh, I used to have calendars on both my blogs, and that's, they're pretty passe, so I just decided just in the last week just to take them off. And uh, I just had to find the, the widget, because I'm always updating the WordPress, so it's yeah. hard to find where it is. And it's kind of annoying, but um, I know it's progress, you know, for the, for the WordPress site. And I'm on WordPress.com, and I'm not on WordPress.org. I mean, I can't do all that complicated stuff. It's too hard. I just want to keep it simple. Yeah. Um, I, for the customization that we need, I use CSS Editor. Um, and I forget if it's a plugin or a widget. Um, I haven't been on back for a little bit. Um, but it lets me do all the edits that I need to do in terms of fonts or colors um, without too much downtime. Question? Sir? 
Anybody else have a question? So um, one of my questions, and Roe, we sort of talked about this a little bit on email, is you're working for a university, so you have to vet deems um, because they need to be accessible. Um, I think accessibility is very important. I try to incorporate that in all of my themes. Um, but it's a challenge. It's just something that you have to learn all the time and keep up on. Um, so what is it that you look for when you're picking a theme? Um, what is, do you have a set criteria that you look, look at when you're vetting themes? So in terms of accessibility, it's <laughs> huge for us because um, the department that I work for at my university, it's all about um, intellectual and developmental disability research. So if we have self-advocates who can't access our website, well, that's the end, isn't it? So what I look for in a theme, I look for, honestly, I look for the basics. Um, you know, in terms of like all the other projects I have, I want to make sure that I'm not going to spend all my time, you know, trying to find a workaround for a video if I can just provide a transcript instead. Um, I look for minimal pictures if I don't need to have excess pictures. I think our galleries only have, um, from each of our events, like I think max we have 32 images um, because you have to all tag everything. Um, all of our banners um, have all tags, so um, if someone's using a screen reader, they're able to, you know, determine based off that where they are um, on the page. So um, I make sure if I'm putting something on there, I have to make sure that it is can be accessible for everyone. So um, that includes, um, you know, no flash. It includes descriptive alt tags for everything. Um, I don't mess around with like. Uh, fonts that may be difficult um, to uh, transcribe. Um, and what we do with every single page that we release is we make sure that it's readable in um, an accessibility uh, check uh, check app. It's a, it's a plug-in, not a plug-in, but it's something you can add out to Chrome that checks um, what it looks like if you are a person using a screen reader. So that's important for us. That's awesome. That's great. Accessibility also benefits SEO and just Google search because you're writing good, clear content and semantic content. So, I mean, there's wins wins all around for that. Um, you have a question? Can, can you can recommend? You go up to the mic, actually, because we get it. Or we can grab it for you. I'll do this again. Thank you. I, I have two questions as long as I'm here. Uh, um, do you, can you recommend a, um, accessible themes? Um, so the one that I use for um, our main um, page um, for our clients is Ribosome, so R-I-B-O-S-O-N-E, um, and that one I really like because it, it's a simple um, banner, um, banner and content uh, design, so to me it's free. Um, it's not terribly complicated for anyone to, who's using a screen reader or maybe has vision impairment to use. And um, I find that it's very popular and there's a really good support for it. And, and do you put a page builder with these? Do, do they, do um, the page builders, are they accessible at all? Page builder would be like Beaver Builder, Bold Grid, or Visual Composer. They sit on top and let you drag and drop and place things oh. more easily. I haven't had to, to I've, I've done everything by hand. Uh, and so I have one more question. Um, doing the CSS editor, is that like instead of doing a child thing? Um, I would, uh, I think I have to go into the file to determine that again. Um, it's not the, it's not the actual source code itself, but it's, um, it's something that I found, like, in my search for, you know, how do I upgrade everything, um, and not have to pay a ton of money for it. Um, so, I can't recall, like, off the top of my head, if it's, a plugin or a widget, and I actually think it might be a paid app. So there, I think there's a, yeah, do you want to answer more? You, you might. Um, I always like the child theme anyway, mm -hmm. but the new um, CSS addition they've added to WordPress is amazing. It um, It's right in there, it's right in the tool. I mean, I was blown away, I was so surprised by it, I was like, whoa, thank you, yes, thank you, <laughs> team. And, um, you can watch it right in front of you as you're using it, so you don't actually need to add anything else. As far as accessibility, one woman spoke earlier this weekend, and they're at, they actually have a free theme they're yeah. willing to offer, and that's 
I think it's at accessibilityoz.com. That's it. And yeah. they have a free thing, that, so that right. that's, you can actually get it from the, if you write to them, they will let you have it. And they have a skip link at the top, which I have never used. And I was very, that was like one of the things I learned this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So I guess I would ask, um, besides just vetting, Themes for accessibility and maybe customizing. Where would, where do you all look? Where do you go to look for your themes? Are you are you getting paid themes? Or are you going to WordPress.org? You're on WordPress.com, so that means you get you're accessing all of the great themes that they're professionally doing. Do you have some tips and places where people can look for good themes? Well, I just look on WordPress.com. I yeah. just haven't really built. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I just look on WordPress.com. I just haven't really thought about looking beyond WordPress.com at the moment. Yeah, and I think with WordPress.com, you are limited to the ones that they have there. Yeah. But they're uh, professionally done. Yeah, um, I like what, what's yeah. there, but I just don't know if it's really doable for outside in, you know, because I want to change the outside in um, thing because I've used the Misty Look for the last few years and I just want to, you know, make a, you know, tweak it. You know, once in a while you should tweak your blog <laughs> a little bit, make a little slight change here or there. Where do you have a place that you look, or you just work with your developer mostly? Um, no, it's not working with developer. I actually found the theme through yeah. a lot of research, as that woman pointed out. Um, I, I actually started with, it's Tom Osborne is the name of the developer, and he's from Canada. I've never met him. I've written to him a lot. <laughs> <laughs> And his basic theme is Generate Press, but he has like five themes out. And uh, they're clean, they're simple, and he has a paid add-on that lets you do spacing, fonts, <coughs> colors, boom, boom, boom. And he's, none of his themes has ever interfered with the plugin, which for me is like, thank you, because I have a site right now, Horror Story, that I used a different theme, which I won't mention, that is directly competing with Visual Composer and none of my images are showing up and I have to go home and fix that. So, horror stories of themes, you can pick one that won't, that it may be working when you started and I can see the images when I'm logged in, this is really ugly, but over time, sometimes the plugins change, the themes change, the plugins change, the themes change, and you may hit a place where the theme doesn't work anymore if you get a theme. I also have another horror story, I had a client who Went out, picked her own theme, bought it. We tried to install it. It did not, it fought with the plugins. So read, read the reviews, please. When you go look at, on WordPress.org, look at the stars, look at how many people downloaded it, read the reviews, read the bad ones. Now you'll be able to tell who's just bitching because they're having a bad day <laughs> review. You can tell that. But read the bad reviews because it's going to tell you if you're going to have a problem, they're going to say, I tried to use it with this plugin and it broke. And if you use that plugin, don't use that theme. That's, that's the simple part. That's good advice. I think anytime I found when you're picking a theme or even a plugin, look at the reviews, look at how many installs there are, because it's really going to help. If there's, you know, a lot of people are using the theme, ideally that means that someone is motivated to keep up the code and make sure that it works with popular plugins. So that's, that's great advice. Um, Ro, where, where have you been looking for your themes? Um, I use, I kind of go with um, whatever's popular and fits the bill that we have. Um, and not all projects are funded, not all websites have a budget for them, so I'll always look for a free option. Um, I feel like maybe the clients that I have are a little bit different from the ones that Moira has in terms of, you know, we're just trying to get information out, we're not trying to draw in new people, um, and we don't have a budget for a lot of these things. So when, I guess, the folks who came here, are you guys looking for themes that you can help monetize your blog or your product, or, um, or are you just trying to um, set up like a support blog, or trying to have an informational blog? Yeah, so how many people here are setting up sites for other clients? raise your hands. And then how many people are just serving their own WordPress site or looking to serve their own WordPress site? Okay, so a lot more. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so a little bit different. <laughs> so are you doing like personal blogs? Is that what you want to do? Personal blogs? Yeah, it sounds like personal yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, 
I'll say it is pretty much a personal blog because sometimes I do write about personal stuff like the deaths, the deaths of my parents, the deaths of my cats, my aunts, the deaths of uh, some of my favorite celebrities, especially this year. And you're happy with WordPress.com and yeah, you know, I mean I just don't, I don't really have the money to just go to WordPress.org. I mean, because previously, long before I started blogging, I, I did buy a couple of websites, and they were expensive, and it just yeah. drained my savings account just to, just to maintain them. I mean, I, yeah. I still have them, but I just don't do much with them these days. Well, they take care of all the hosting. You don't have to worry about all that stuff, yeah. so that's, that's, that's useful. Sir, do you have a question? Yes, I'm very much of a newbie, so this might be obvious to a lot of you, but could you talk about the relationship between themes and page builders? Ah, okay. I don't know anything about page builds. I went to the page builder talk yesterday and I just, he just ran through all those topics and I just still don't put it off hand what, what was going on. <laughs> Moira, yeah. do you want to talk yeah. about it? You probably um, have some yeah. experience. Okay, so you have your basic WordPress installation. On top of it, you put a theme in and that's your base look and feel. Your page builder would sit, again, it's like a, it's basically like a plug-in. And it sits in and lets you control the pages. Now, with some of the new stuff coming out in WordPress, I think they're going to become a little bit less important. But right now, you're still useful. And um, they'll let you do drag and drop of pictures, make three columns. That's what the builder does. The themes sometimes have builders built in. But then you've got them married, and you can never change your theme easily. So I don't recommend doing that. I think it's nicer if they're separate for me. Um, because if you want to change a theme out, or like this theme I'm having a problem with, I can do it and the page builder still stays there. So I don't lose my shaping of my content and how I laid it out. I can just change the theme. So if they're separate, and they think of them as layers almost, that's easier to work with. Does that make sense? And also the difference between WordPress.org and WordPress.com. Do you want to speak to that? Yeah, sure. So um, WordPress.org is where you can go and get the open source software WordPress um, and install it um, on your own server or get hosting and, and do that. WordPress.com is um, a, a professional hosted install of WordPress. So it's owned by Automatic. They have one install of WordPress. They're running millions of sites on it. Um, there's personal blogs, there's even high-level professional sites on there. Um, so basically what you're paying is for, um, they have free versions, um, but you can also pay for, ho and basically you're paying to have a managed install of WordPress that you don't need to worry about. Um, they have a little bit less functionality than you can maybe have with a self-hosted WordPress site, um, but they also, you get access to high-end professional themes, um, custom functionality that they have built in. Um, so it's a pretty great service, depending on what, what your needs are, especially if you're not a technical person. It just takes away a lot of that headache for you. I, I have a lot of small clients, and I have a lot of, I, I have running 10, I'm going to launch another WordPress site this coming week. Last week was fun. Um, and I'm updating them one to two times a week, all of these sites, because plugins come out almost every day, the updates of the plugins, updates of the themes, updates, updates, updates. So if you're really just doing a blog, I think WordPress.com is the way to go. It really is, because you don't have to worry about any of that. You just don't have to worry about it. Even if you have to pay for the manage and get better service, you're not worrying about the updates. Now, if you're doing something customized, you're going to have to keep it updated. Oh, please keep it updated, because Yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only word. Good For all of us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, can you go up to the mic? Thank you. Sorry. We're no recording this so we can want to hear your question. Uh, well, the last guy was somewhat of a newbie, so am I. I, uh, I actually owned an agency for a very long time, and, and, and uh, we built and, and uh, developed a lot of sites, but I had nothing to do with it. I just paid people to do it and sold it. Um, so uh, I just, I, what I'm doing is I'm not in the agency business anymore and uh, I'm developing a personal blog which is actually going to be fairly large. And 
so I dove in at the beginning of July studying everything I could get my hands on. And uh, uh, so Monday, my theme is going on to uh, my WordPress installation, and I still haven't the faintest idea <laughs> what a child theme is. I, I, would somebody please explain this to me? <laughs> it's a mystery. Okay. Uh, a child theme, you're taking two files, you're putting them in a separate folder, which is your um, CSS file, your styles.css, and it's your WP config? I think functions file. Functions, functions. functions file. Yeah. Functions file, sorry. My brain isn't totally on today. <laughs> and you put those two files in a folder. Now, you may not even change them, except for a little bit of change in the code. And, and you could go to WP Beginner. They'll walk mm -hmm. you through it. They're great. WP Beginner, if you're really a beginner, please go there. Watch all the videos. OK. <laughs> so you build that. And then when you update the theme, it doesn't overwrite what you've done. So you want the child so it doesn't overwrite what you have changed personally. Because otherwise, you can go right back to square one and have to do it all over again, and nobody wants to do that. Is that kind of like having a backup? It's not like having a backup. It's like having a separate place where you're storing your changes mm -hmm. that doesn't get overwritten when they overwrite okay, the thing. Yeah. That's what it is. And okay. it's in the same WP content <coughs> folder. Mm -hmm. And you point to it in your under your um, in your themes, in your um, yeah, appearance. Can, appearance? Yeah. Is that the? Yeah, you can yeah, appearance. Think, yeah. If you, you point have to, the files. You point to the child yeah. instead of to the original theme. Yeah. Well, That's all. You just said clear it up. Yeah, thanks. Thank yeah, and once again, the benefit, you don't lose your changes, but then, because um, you want to update your themes for security reasons and new functionality, so. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you have a, a question, me? I was just going to add, okay. I'm going to ask you to go to the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry. That's okay. Thank you. Um, I don't really use child themes, but I keep reading about them. And it's my understanding that when you make the child theme, when you take the CSS file, you're using the header and you're only putting in your changes. Yes. Right. Yeah. Correct. So everything stays the same, and you're only adding a little bit of code that's, if you're changing from something to green to red, only that information goes into the child theme file. Yeah. And then everything else stays the same. But if they update everything else in the main file, your change stays because it's in the separate file. Right, because that's how cascading styles work. Right, your but you don't style move everything the bottom style. You don't duplicate the whole it. thing because then it has to read through everything twice. No, not the whole thing. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just your changes. And now with the customizer having the capability to edit the CSS, which sounds like what Ro has been doing, um, you can just do it right there. It's pretty yeah. handy. You don't need it as much. Yeah. I still think it's yeah. Go to the mic. Thank you. Hi. Um, so I'm new in WordPress as well, and I'm using .org um, for a blog that I'm starting up next month. Um, my issue is trying to figure out what's important to have for a theme. Like I've seen, like a lot of the same. Like some of them are like, um, like WooCommerce um, that has Google Fonts. I'm not too sure what that is. Um, that some of them have like particular like custom social cons like I like it's hard for me to find a particular theme that has like SoundCloud in it because if I want to do like for instance like poetry and put spoken word with it I don't have like a link that I can put SoundCloud to it but I just but I'm like there's nothing on the side I can only do like Twitter and Instagram so um basically I just want to know like what are the best things that I should have for a theme um especially for as a writer as a okay yeah first Who's your audience? That's your first question. Who's your audience? What are you trying to do? Those are your first questions for yourself, really. Who's your audience? What are you going to do? And then don't pick a theme that has a bunch of stuff in it you don't need. Take a simpler theme and find plugins that will do with those things you need to do. Like the social, some of the social media plugins do have us extended social media choices. So you might need that. I mean, I found one that has Twitch for the gaming company. 
I didn't know what Twitch was, but they wanted it, so we found it. So there's lots out there. You're going to spend a little time in the plugins, searching for what you want. And again, always read. Is it updated? Is it compatible with yours? You know, all of those. You have to read it every time. But um, if you're going to go with building your own site, there are enough plugins that will probably do what you want to do if you start with a simple thing. I, I can honestly say that. Yeah, that's what I would say too. Even though I'm just a user, just start out simple, and if you see something more appealing, just um, change it. <laughs> I mean, they don't mind if, they, if you change the, the thing, you know, as long as it benefits the, the audience. Yeah, that's good. Advice. I think the last thing, um, use the community. The forums that um, are available for WordPress are incredibly helpful. Um, we had started out with essentially just a simple blog. Um, for one of our clients, our uh, school clients, and then they decided that they wanted a forum. Well, I've never built a forum in my life. Yeah. Um, it was something that no one else had ever wanted. It was um, unnecessary, in my opinion. Um, but it was still something that they wanted. So um, I looked at, so I did my research, you know, background, you know, well, can I tack a, um, a forum that already exists that's hosted on another group and just tack it onto the site as an external link? You know, would that make sense? Um, and then just through asking the community, um, I was able to find um, an in WordPress forum option that did the trick. It's a little clunky, but no one uses it anyways. So. <laughs> and I did the opposite. I um, had the gaming company use a regular gaming forum, and we just linked it in. Yeah. So, all good. <laughs> you have a question? Um, yeah, my question was, uh, how many plugins is too many plugins? <laughs> Good question. I think I only have five. <laughs> well, I got rid of the calendar one, so it might be down to four. <laughs> is that just where do you want to take that one? Since you Not really, one? but... <laughs> um, how many plugins do you really need? That's the question. There are some that I think are essential. I think your search engine tools probably essential. Your security plugins are essential. Don't live without those. You have to have those. Um, and then from there, only use the plugins you need. If you're not using a plugin, deactivate it, delete it, get it the heck out of there. Because you're just going to have to update it. What do you need? That's how many plugins you need. Um, I've had hosts, it and also it depends on the host you're going with. If you're going with a general host, they can be fussy about how many plugins. I've had people complain to me, there's 15 plugins on this site. I said, yeah, that's how many I need. Um, but with the WordPress um, dedicated hosts, I haven't had any complaints about stuff like that. They're actually prepared to handle a, a good number of plugins. But really, only keep the ones you need, and if you don't need them, get rid of them. You can always bring them back. I would agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> yep, can you come yep. up to the mic? Thanks. Hi, I'm new to this also, and I was just wondering, so for dot .org, you need to have a host, is that correct? Could you talk about hosts that you suggest or any conversation about that, or is this off topic? I don't know. Kind of off topic. Um, hmm. Okay, well. No, that's. No, it's, a, it's, it's okay. It's a good question. It's okay. It's a good question. Um, really depends on what your needs are as a person using the host. Um, we have some great hosts downstairs. I've talked to them all because I'm thinking of moving my own business sites, and I've talked to them all, and it's good to talk to them and see what they offer. Some do WordPress only. Some do different, um, they will do different types of sites, and, and I actually have other sites, but um, it depends on the type of support you need. Some of them will only do chat support, some of them will do call-ins, some will charge you for call-ins. Try to investigate all of that. All the people downstairs are really good people. Talk to them. Take your time to talk to them today because they're the reason why we're here in part. They sponsor us. Mm -hmm. So talk to them and see what they offer and see how you feel about them. I mean, if you're really starting out, um, 
Bluehost is good, and you get a discount if you go to the WordPress meetups. So um, go to the WordPress meetups, you get the code for the discount. Or they have discount cards, they're good. Um, GoDaddy is very friendly with service. Um, they're always, I mean, if you call them, it, they're pleasant to call. I've got clients on those. Um, I've just put a site on SiteGround, and they were excellent, but it's only chat. If you call them, they charge you. So, you know, I have sites on many different hosts because I have a lot of different clients. I have, again, I have a client on DreamHost, and they're only chat. You could only reach them through chat. If something goes down, you can't reach them. It's, so it really depends on what you need. Yeah. But I think it's good for WordPress to get a WordPress host. Yeah, I would just, um, we're about to wrap up here, but I would second that. I would say, um, depends on your technical expertise. It's one of those things, it's worth the money. I would highly recommend a managed host. Um, I have good experience with WP Engine, I'll put a plug in for them. Um, but, or even if you need, if you don't need to do a custom site, WordPress.com is an excellent choice. So, um, so we have to wrap up, sir. We can take your question Just a, Just a quick yeah. comment, and that is, uh, it took me a while to figure this out, DreamHost, if you're a 501c3 registered with the IRS uh, and have a small site, it's free. Yeah. yeah. Well, Thank I'll you. Give you discount. Yeah. Wow. Free. Actually, okay. if you're doing a 501c3 and you're getting plugins that are paid for, check and see if they have a nonprofit discount. Always. Cool. All right. Well, we're out of time. I would like to no. thank our panel and thank everyone for your questions.